Hey, what's up guys? Chad um, Artem, yes. Spray Gunner, and uh, today we are talking about GSI Krios, Mr. Hobby. Uh, in particular, we're talking about the PS290 airbrush. It's a sweet, sweet airbrush. Yeah, sweet trigger, Mr. Hobby. I would uh, start a tradition of talking about this name because a lot of people confusing it as a Mr. Hobby is uh, for hobby guys. I'm a professional. I would not use the hobby stuff, and especially this is why it's uh, cheaper as other brands, you know, from uh, Japan. It's not for a hobby, okay? Especially this one uh, in my hands with a 50 mm cap. That's not for a hobby guys, believe me. It's a standard product for automotive use. And this airbrush has all the Teflon seals everywhere, have to be all the material connected. So you can put a solvent based paints in there, no worries at all. Actually, the Mr. Hobby's uh, paints are solvent, most of them. Oh, yeah, most of them. Except yeah. for the accretion line, which if you're not in spray and solvents, go give it a check out. Uh, uh, I'll spray gunner. Yeah. <laughs> Anyways, Mr. Hobby for professional use, good airbrush from Japan, and uh, let's, let's see what's inside. So, so this is what you get right out of the box. As you can see, you got your airbrush. Sweet little setup right there. It's a good looking airbrush. Do you have one of those? No, oh, I do. I use it all the time. I honestly, it's probably right behind. I mean, I really like the Platinum series and I like the Infinity, but I just, I find that this brush can be used for so much. Honestly, the end, it cuts down time on work because you're just covering some larger areas. So if you're not doing like, super detail stuff, this can pretty much get the job done. Um, so you got your fan cap standard, installed out of the box, round cap available, um, nice little wrench. I don't use these guys, I tend to use the maintenance kit nozzle removal tool, uh, which we do have available. Yeah, I'll show it later in the video. You then have your, so this is an air can adapter. Um, you know, really popular in Japan, not so popular in the US, um, but if you're on the road and you don't have access to a compressor and you do have an air can, hey, you can throw this right on there. Um, and now your hose that comes with this, you know, it's not the highest quality hose. It's pretty short in length. And right now it's, I think it's like an M5. So it's really only threaded for this uh, can adapter. Um, but on our website, we do have an adapter for it. So if you don't want to go out and spend extra money on a hose, you just buy the adapter. I think it's like three, three, bucks. three yeah. bucks. Yeah. And you throw it on there and you'll be able to hook it up to your airbrush, right to your compressor. Um, so it's an option. Something important to mention, because we, did, we had returns saying that the airbrush doesn't fit standard 1.8 hose, which we have in the description. So our description return special from, uh, you know, from Amazon and stuff like that, just remove it. Okay, that's unscrewable, and you have your standard 1.8, same as uh, Arden, Steinbeck, other brands, uh, Japanese, Chinese, all the guys, mm -hmm. Sparmax, they're all standard. So that's, uh, that's going to fit your house, most of most of most likely. And uh, what else? You want to take it apart? I'm not going to use this wrench. So you mentioned that, uh, let's pull some tools and take it apart. Uh, I have some uh, tools. <laughs> Wait, that's the wrong that's the wrong drawer. That's not the brand I'm thinking of. I can't mention it's a brand, but yeah, we use it still sometimes. That's out of the toolbox. So those are the brute force tools. So yeah, the nozzle uh, tool, actually no name, a uh, couple of uh, items I'm going to talk about. I have for, uh, how much is it? I think $7. I think $7 on the website. Extremely and we need a couple of small screwdrivers. It's going to pop from here. And the rusty one. See how rusty rust it is? <laughs> You're gonna have one of those. If you have a brand new one, probably not gonna work on this airbrush just because it needs some, you know, it needs to be in some place that have experience. But, anyways, let's try to pull it apart. Uh, paint cap is removable as you can uh, guess because we have a replacement for a 50 mil. I think there's a smaller one available as well. Yeah, the, uh, the cut from the 275 will fit on there, and I think it's a couple milliliters smaller for you. You hobby guys that might not want the full size cup or the even larger cup. We have all the parts in stock, and there's a nice diagram on the website where you can find all the part numbers. But basically, that's your handle. You can uh, pull this rear piece apart and need adjustment. Set them here. When you are uh, taking apart your airbrush for cleaning or whatever you do with it, two important things. First, I like to pull the uh, needle from the back first. Just so when you are unscrewing the nozzle, you're not getting any threads on the, on the needle. But if you have a 
dry paint inside the cup. If you have like, if you feel tension to pull the needle up, you cannot. Don't try to force it go out because you can damage the inside tampon screw. I mean the seal. So if you have dry paint inside, take off the air cap first. You can either on this model unscrew the whole headpiece, which actually I need a tool for, or unscrew the nozzle and then pull the needle through the nozzle. If you have dry paint, if not, just uh, take off then take out the needle and then work with your nozzle. That's the tool Chad Miller referring to. Very convenient to have this little uh, gap here to put the nozzle in. This way you don't have to. First one, you won't lose it when it comes off. Mm -hmm. Stays nicely in the tool. Secondly, when you put it inside, you can kind of feel measure the pressure so you don't over tighten and uh, broken, which happens a lot and it's a really popular thing to do. Yeah. I've somehow to have, I don't have a wrench for this. That's uh, kind of soft grip pliers which I'm referring to. Mm -hmm. And that's exactly what we need to loosen this middle part just a little bit and now you can use the fingers to yeah, what is it doing? Yeah, from the soft job pipe. Yeah. <laughs> Got some pain. It's maybe we'll grow up in a pain bottle. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but anyways, this part comes up. I have a spring there, don't lose it. Tries to jump out right, uh, right away. That's the first spring, you give me another one because it's a, uh, what do you call it? Double dependent action or yeah, one and a half action, some yeah. people call it. But anyways, I have a little screw in here. Which you need a small, uh, I don't know if I can use this for it. Now we have had some customers uh, come to us wondering why the plate inside won't come out. Well, there's a retaining screw, like yeah. Artem just said. And uh, if, you, if you go to try and remove the other piece, there's a strong chance you might scratch the inside of the body or damage that. So just remember there's a retaining screw holding that in place. Perfect size screwdriver. So anyways, that's the screw you got in there. Alright, and now we we'll take this, uh, what do we what do you call this? Uh, I just call it like kind of like the retaining plate. I mean, it's holding that spring in front. So where you have the spring on the chuck, your second spring is held in place by that plate. And that plate's held in place by the retaining screw that Arvin just removed. Um, so yeah, that's, I mean, I just call it the retaining plate. Uh, there, there's probably another term for it. Okay. Anyways, another spring under it. It's not going to jump on because it's already lost tension while we are screwing this. I remember that it's inside. Here it is. So two springs, as I mentioned, normally I rush with cam just one. And let's pull this part out of there. Just give a little help from here. Actually, let me remove the trigger first. So trigger just had a little screw on top here. Here, it's pretty simple to get it out. Here it is, here comes the trigger, and now just give a little push to this part. Hmm. Oh, you know, the arrow should come off first. I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. And that's actually important to have on this grid here. Can't use that thing liquid for like a yeah. whatever. Uh, it's a. Uh, I think the liquid. If you put liquid lube in there, it's gonna run around too much on you, mm -hmm. and it's getting. It's gonna get into areas where you you don't want stuff to be. Um, and which is just another thing to watch out for your airbrush maintenance in general. And this is airbrush. Actually, I think the same situation with the automotive actually like hand setter brushes. There's metal to metal connection right in here, which I'm gonna put out. This little piece comes from the top. If we can put it in this hole. Oh, yeah, but try not to go this deep in uh, <laughs> taking apart the brush because it can be a nightmare to put them back together. But this little piece 
is what do you call it? Piston or Yeah, essentially, yeah. That's actually how your air valve was. So when you press the trigger, this goes against that uh, angled what do you call it? Angle, angle cut, and that's what pushes it in. So you have metal to metal tension, that's why important to have all the grease here in place and uh, probably the only one place in this airbrush it really needs to have this kind of heavy loop. Mm -hmm. And you can use a standard uh, real automotive crate or other loops. Yeah. It's not getting in contact with your paint, so it should be okay. But anyways, that's the part which can be a nightmare to put back because I have to use this little hole and just go ahead and drop it into the place. I know I'm gonna try it. There's a little uh, o-ring inside. I can try to pull out, but again, if you're if you're careful with an airbrush, if you don't have any uh, solvent going in there, is normally you don't have to replace it. Anyways, to continue, you can use. Uh, first of all, you can uh, take apart the air valve using again the tool we have in our name set. Uh, helps with this little nut on top. That's what you have uh, holding together your air valve inside. Here's your little spring and the rod. Basically, two parts inside an airbrush. I mean, an uh, air valve. Watch for this little uh, O-ring, and there's another one here on top. If they go bad for some reason, drop the airbrush and the solvent, or the solvent went to somehow to air channel, it can dissolve them and uh, cause some troubles. So take it apart, check if they're okay, if they're in place, because that might cause some uh, uncontrolled air when you know we have the airbrush just picking air from the front. And you use the same tool just to put it back together. You can put this knot in here first, which is really helpful. Oops. I think I'm a little clumsy today. <laughs> but anyways, here's a knot. And just uh, use this tool to put it on stuff. Yep, yeah. it's there. So it's all working now. Have to have this uh, little pressure on the spring. And another part you can, and sometimes you have to pull out is there again using no name tool. Is this uh, little nut which holds your Teflon, like I mentioned before, needle seal, so this prevents from the paint going back to the airbrush air channels and all the other parts that don't have to necessarily be easy to install back with this tool. Just put it like that and screw it back in. Don't over tighten it, otherwise the needle won't go and that's why this tool is important. It's not just a screwdriver, we have this little part coming in which basically emulates the needle in there, so you won't be able to overtighten too much. But anyways, let's, uh, I'll put it back together in the end of the video on camera. Let's talk about what this airbrush can actually spray. So it has, uh, we, we let some spray here, it has uh, two air cups, like I mentioned, round and... Uh, yeah, uh, the round cap and your fan cap. Um, so I think, uh, let's see. Yeah, we just stopped at Chrome Air Studio and dropped some paint ahead, so I think this was a little too thin. But anyways, you can see the uh, pattern. I'm not sure if you can see it in the camera there, but we can put it in the camera here. Yeah, that's what you get. Uh, not as tiny line as you can uh, go achieve with uh, some 0.15 mm <laughs> brushes. Right. right. That's doesn't design for this kind of detail, work, right? Yeah. But even then, I mean, with a double action, double dependent, action at 0.5 you're getting pretty nice lines there and it's not really it's not a detailed brush so the fact that you can take it to that level even with this i think that speaks volumes for the quality of the product yeah honestly for this airbrush the most volume is that you can have the flat nice and uh, large round circles to cover large areas because normally it's used for primers so if you get tokens canvas or Covering some backgrounds, you know, if you do some automotive work. I know some people use it, and that's why the cup is for some people using it for like health repair. Mm -hmm. Things if you need to fix a scratch or something, it's just uh, it's like the mini kind of Yeah. And yeah, this is off camera. I tried to use it with a little uh, 
I think it was too thick actually. Thick yeah. paint, so line goes a little narrower. But uh, yeah, I mean, we went, so it's sprayed paint that was too thin, paint that was too thick, and it did both pretty well, honestly. And I have absolutely beat the crap out of my PS290 with primers, clear coats, solvent-based paints, water-based paints. It works. It always works. Yeah, it's a pretty good airbrush for a price. I think it's a second airbrush must have for most of the users, whatever you do, sky model, uh, like I mentioned, automotive, custom uh, painters guys for interiors like you do if you're more else. It's yeah. one of the airbrushes you want to definitely have in there. So anyways, so let me put it back together and we will end on this, right? Yeah. So, yeah. You can go on, it's going to take a while. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for watching, guys. Right, yes. I'll leave you here See with you him. <laughs>